There's all sorts of people that use chainsaws. There's a professional timber fuller like myself. I use a chainsaw all the time. Couldn't do my job with that one. Well, I suppose I could have went back to the old cross-cut and bow saw. Well, I doubt if I'd only live in that way, though. Then there's a the semi-pro, like council workers, bridge workers, gardeners, and so on. Um, they're not using the chainsaw all the time, but they find one during the course of the day pretty useful for what they're doing. Then there's the amateur, the bloke who borrows the chainsaw from the next door neighbour. The bloke might have a limb or something stuck in his drain. The hobby farmer, blokes like that. There's one thing that all chainsaw operators have in common, don't matter if they're professional, semi-professional, or just amateur. If they don't look after the chainsaw and don't look after themselves, you're gonna end up seriously hurt or even killed. When I wear the bush, I wear good, strong leather, steel cap, non-slip sole boots. Protect my feet. I want to show you wear a good pair of leather, non-slip gloves. This gives protection to your hands from anything flying around or anything like that um, when you're using a chainsaw. Also, a good hard hat. Protects your head. Um, it's a good protection your limbs and anything coming out of the tree. And the face shield. This stops any sawdust or bits and pieces the chainsaw might throw back at you, hit you in the face. And earmuffs. Now, if you're using a chainsaw for any length of time, it can send you deaf. So make sure you always put earmuffs. Okay, don't matter if you're using a chainsaw once a year or every day, the same principles apply. And uh, oh, you've got to protect yourself. Hey, Robert. Don't get cut off a berry and see. I've got a row. I've got a man who works seven days a week, I think. Um, when you're carrying a chainsaw in a vehicle, Always make sure you get the cover over the blade and the chain. That gives you protection for your chain and your blade. And also, also make sure you've got your chainsaw security sitting in your vehicle. I'll carry mine on the old box here, like that. Put it down the lid. Can't bounce about if you have an accident or anything. It can't hit you in the back of the head and cause any damage or anything like that. There's a right and a wrong way to carry a saw. You should never carry a saw with a motor going. You could have to actually bump the throttle or something like that, uh, which cause, could cause damage to yourself the saw, if you to fall over. Um, you should always carry with this cover on the saw, which protects the blade, the chain, and your saw. This is the way you don't carry a chainsaw. What happens if you slip? There goes your neck. Stump makes a good vice in the bush, hold the chainsaw with it. Bring the box down for us, please, Rog. Uh, there's a number of things you should check before you start your day's work. Just your on and off switch not sticking, your choke working okay, your throttle that's not sticking half throttle or anything like that, and your hand guard and your chain brake is working okay. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Come in, hold that for me, So. Before you start your day saw, and you always want to check your chain for see how sharp it is, because if it's not sharp, it'll cause kickback, uh, kick your saw back out of the log, things like that. And all check, always check it for uneven wear between your chain and your blade, and for loose linkages, because if they break, it can come back and cut your arms or anywhere else, your body. Just check the tension on this chain. This one's a bit tight. Wrench here under these couple of nuts. Couple there. Half a turn. Leave him alone, Roger. Leave him alone. And you loosen it off, adjust the blind screw in there. And you get the 
is loose. That's about right. Let's do it up. If you're using your saw all day, you want to check your chain, check, check your tension uh, hourly. Also, all these little nuts and bolts around here, ones in here, they come loose through vibration of the saw. You don't want your chainsaw to pull to pieces halfway through your cut, halfway through or fall on your tree. Okay, Roger, I'm staying over there. I'm just, I'm staying over there. Always remember, chainsaws is a one-person saw. All children and animals should be well out of the road when you're using the chainsaw. Uh, flying limbs, uh, chain comes off and could hit them or anything like that. Just keep them well out of the road. Uh, okay, now I'll show you how to start a saw. Right. When you're starting a chainsaw, always make sure you start on a flat bit of ground. I know it's a bit hard in the bush, but you might be able to find a stump or something you can start it on. Always put your foot on the back of the handle like that that keeps the blade and the chain up off the ground and away from anything and hit. And you always put that hand on top there, the hold the chainsaw firmly on the ground and your chain break on. Yeah. Make sure you always pull the starting rope away from your body. You notice the chain wasn't turning while the chainsaw was idling. Um, if the chain does spin while the chainsaw is idling, you should get your idling screw adjusted. Okay? And also, it's pretty common practice for blokes to drop to start a chainsaw like that. But that's what can happen. We're going to cut a bit of wood now, I suppose. Okay, right, go and get a bit of wood. Better give me your helmet too. Where's the gear? Down next to the stump. Oh, better go and get that first then. Come on. <clears throat> you never really feel a chainsaw around where you're working because of all your flame uh, fuel and that. You never, never smoke or have a naked flame around um, where you're refueling either. You got any crackers, have you? No. Sure? Mm. And when you're refueling, make sure your motor's off and the engine is cool. Okay. And when you're refilling your tank, make sure it's clean around the neck, around the petrol cap so you don't get any grit or dirt in your tank to clog your carburetor up. And it's good practice to get in to ch check your chain oil every time you yeah, check your fuel motor. That's right. It's full. Okay. Gotta get a bit of wood. Oh, another thing to get into too, good practice. Never start your chainsaw unless you're three metres away from your fuel fueling point, okay? Stop there, Roger. Yeah, looks like a nice bit of firewood. Looks like somebody's had a go at it already. First thing we do before we, before we start cutting is get rid of some of this limb wood around so we can't get hold of the saw and we can't catch up on it and stick back at you. And oh, another thing, don't use, do what I've seen some other blokes do is use the saw and the blade for a shovel. Doesn't do the blade or the chain any good. Catch it on a rock, bend the blade or something. Right, correct way to hold a chainsaw is with your left hand firmly on the top bar with your thumb wrapped around underneath the forefinger, like that, behind the chain guard. Your right hand on the throttle, works the throttle, a firm grip, like that. Always make sure you've got a good, firm foot holding. So if you happen to get kicked back with the saw, you're not going to get thrown off balance and catch yourself. Don't work on an insecure support. Uh, if you're working up a ladder, make sure the top of the ladder is lashed to the tree. And if you're working up the tree with a chainsaw, make sure that you've got a safety harness on. One final point is when you're cutting, you always stand to the left of your cut. So if you get any pushback from your saw, the saw is going to come out like that. You stand behind it. Always start a cut with the chain rotating at full speed and the dogs hard against the wood. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the dangers 
of using a saw when you're cutting and your chain suddenly stops. That's what we call pull in, push back and kick back. I'll show you a pull in first. See what I mean? The way to avoid this is always have your dogs up against the log. It stops the saw from coming forward. Um, now I'll show you what I mean by pushback. Okay, so that one's a lot more dangerous. Uh, you should never try an undercut uh, unless you're experienced with a saw. And also avoid pinching the top of your bar. Your biggest danger in saw is what they call kickback. It's got a lot of blokes in the trouble. It's when you start to saw with this part of the saw, all the nose of the saw, you hit something solid or something like that, it'll kick back on you. Now I'll, I'll try and do a demonstration for you. Try. Close. Now you can see how dangerous kickback is. A lot of manufacturers these days are bringing safety devices out on chainsaws. Um, this one's they've made the hand guard into a chain break. So when the ch uh, chainsaw kicks back, you put that, that automatically stops your chain from turning and uh, stops getting damaged in your face or whatever it is. Different manufacturers have developed a variety of chain break systems but they all work in the same principle of stopping the chain in a kickback situation. If your chainsaw doesn't have a chain brake on it, you can fit a hand strap. It's not going to stop the chain, but it'll stop the saw from spinning in your hand. Some models feature the safety tip, a guard over the danger area. And there's the safety chain, which reduces the kickback, with a built-up tie link, which feeds the wood back up to the cutting edge. There's the banana bar, which greatly reduces the kickback danger area. Okay, let's go into the workshop and I'll show you a few basic points on maintenance on chainsaws. Keep downloading the gear for it, look. Okay, the reason why we took that off that side plate, so we can get all the, the sawdust and grit that's got in around the near, look, see? Around the cog, around the sprocket. Also, while you got it off, it's a good idea to check the sprocket for wear down there with the chain runs around. It's just nice and clean to let the sawdust not out. Make sure the little place near the oil comes out, it lubricates the chain and the blade. It comes through that little hole there. I'll show you. It comes out through, out through that little hole. Make sure that's clean so no sawdust or anything in it. When you've finished all that, clean all that up. Take this back plate off and clean your air filter. There. Uh, if you're working in dusty conditions, you should clean it twice daily. Okay, another good thing to do with your saw is to take the chain off the blade, take your blade completely off the saw itself. Get your, get your screwdriver and run around the blade like that in the groove where the chain runs to get every bit of grit and stuff that's added in there. So your chain's got a good smooth run. But if you really want to go after your saw, Go back to the owner's manual. That'll tell you everything about maintenance, cleaning your saw. But if you keep your chainsaw clean and look after it, it'll look after you.